edition of ESPN on ABC. Outside Bridgestone Arena, they continue to pack in. We'll have 20,000 plus on hand to finally do what we've been here all week to wait for, crown an SEC champion. Will it be the top seed and the number two team in the country, the Big Blue of Kentucky, or will it be the upset-minded upstarts from Starkville, Mississippi? We find out next. Legends are defined by greatness under pressure. Will you culminate a dominant run? or pull off a stunning upset. A champion will emerge. Who will define the moment? It's the SEC on ESPN, and it's the final of the SEC tournament from Nashville, Tennessee. All a part of championship week presented by Dick Sporting Goods. And what a week it has been. The matchup this afternoon, the Bulldogs of Mississippi State and the Wildcats of Kentucky for the SEC tournament crowd. Here's how these two teams reach this point. In yesterday's semifinal, it was Kentucky in a cakewalk over Tennessee. Mississippi State had to battle, but they beat Bandy by 10, and here they are again for the second year in a row trying to win the SEC Tournament Championship. Welcome to Nashville, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. My partner is Jimmy Dykes. You know, Kentucky was supposed to be here, Jimmy. We knew that. They're the number two team in the country. They've won 44 regular season crowns. They're going after their 26th SEC Tournament Championship. But wait a minute. Mississippi State's here, and they weren't supposed to be. No, not at all, but don't tell Mississippi State that. Brad, Mississippi State today, they're one of those four or five teams, I think, that are battling for those last two spots on the bracket. They can sew it up with a victory today, but they're up against a Kentucky team that brings more talent, more depth, and more tradition. How do you offset that if you're Mississippi State? You bring a great big Valentine and a lot of will. That's what's gotten them to the finals. It will not be easy. On paper, this says it's a neutral floor. No way. This is rough arena of the South. Kentucky is dominating this building. This place is full of blue. As we take a look at our star watch this afternoon, if you like big men battles, you've got one today. The SEC Freshman of the Year, DeMarcus Cousins, has been sensational, and he was superb yesterday with another double-double in the win over Tennessee. But in his path is the three-time SEC Defensive Player of the Year, Jarvis Bernardo, the all-time NCAA shot blocker at 6'9 with those long arms. He'll be a battle for DeMarcus Cousins this afternoon. Starting lineups being introduced. When we come back, it's a dog and cat fight for the SEC crowd. Both wanted it badly in Starkville in the regular season meeting, but Kentucky won it in overtime. 81-75. Patterson and Cousins were sensational. You see the free throw difference. DeBoss led the way with 22 for Mississippi State. And that was a battle right down to the final seconds in Starkville. Jimmy and I were there for it. Let's take a look at our starting lineups. First four, the Bulldogs of Rick Stansberry. DeBoss, I just mentioned, Raven Johnson and Barry Stewart, two excellent three-point shooters. And up front with Jarvis Bernardo is Cody Augustus. For the top seed and number two team in the country, John Calipari's Wildcats, John Wall, Eric Bledsoe, and Darius Miller. The backcourt and up front, Patrick Patterson and DeMarcus Cousins. Patrick Patterson on his birthday, 21 years old today. Be quite a birthday present if he helped Kentucky to another Southeastern Conference Tournament Championship. Our officials, Joe Lindsay, Ted Valentine, and Tom Eads. Tom's got the ball in hand, waiting for the rest of the Wildcats to take the floor. You mentioned Patrick Patterson, the older guy on this team, only turned 21 today. Another sign of how young Kentucky right. is. Brad, only nine teams in the nation are less experienced. No team in the nation has more talent. 
And John Calipari told me back in October, come March, I will take talent over experience every time. He's got it. Our big man matchup to get us underway. And it'll be Kentucky with the ball first. This place is packed with blue. There's some maroon spread around, but as Jimmy said, far from a neutral court. Mississippi State man-to-man. -man. The number one priority is to keep John Wall out of the lane. Augustus bumping with Patrick Patterson. Kick out. Bledsoe had a big game from outside the arc yesterday. They feed it back into Patterson, and he stripped the foul. That first possession, Patrick Patterson got a touch. Mississippi State did not come with an instant double. Barry Stewart picks up the first foul. Barry playing in his final SEC tournament game. And here's Patrick, the birthday boy. I walked up, said, happy birthday, big fella. I said, 21, right? He said, finally. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter how big a star you are. You always want to turn 21 when you're not sure. Older. Something about that number, isn't it? Yep. What a great blender this guy has been as an older player with all those young kids around him throughout this season. Been the leader at the appropriate times, has stepped back and allowed John Wall to take control of the teams at others. It's a backcourt pressure from John Wall. Dangerous pass into the front court. And now DeBoss will go to work. Mississippi State will shoot 25 to 33 point shots in this game. They're going to get them. How good the look is, a big part of this basketball game. Underneath, Bledsoe might have gotten a piece of that. And another Mississippi State foul, this one on Augustus. And this is not a team that fouls much. So far, they've got a couple early ones on their starters. Number two in the nation at Mississippi State this year, Brad, only fouling 14 times per game. They defend well without fouling. It's not like they don't guard you. They guard you, but they do it without fouling. Very important. Wall waiting for a pick from Cousins. Bledsoe will try to pick up where he left off yesterday, but he misses a three, and Raven Johnson's got the rebound. A quickness rebound by Mississippi State. They thrive on him. Oh, nice entry pass from Boss to Augustus. I don't know. That one had eyes. Wall trying to leave it in the lane, and Augustus will pick up the turnover. Barry Stewart to Augustus. And back to Stewart. Had to try to find a handle on the baseline. And in doing so, threw it into the backcourt over and back. Mississippi State turns it over. Let's take a look at that entry pass by DeBost moments ago. I think in, in the SEC, he's the second best transition point guard DeBost is behind John Wall. Similar size, similar speed. You see him standing right there side by side. Bodies look the same. Wall a little faster. But DeBost is awfully close. A terrific matchup at that point guard spot today. And having some clock problems. <laughs> Don't get me started on the scoreboard in this building. <laughs> You've gone to sleep at night thinking about how to fix that. I, I stayed that. awake trying to figure out how to fix that scoreboard. Here's Augustus on another steal, but it's ripped right back by John Wall. Bledsoe underneath. Quick hands at John Wall now. We talk a lot about what he does on the offensive end of the floor. He has become a very trusted lockdown defender at times as well. Again, they get it down low to Bernardo, but he had it momentarily stripped away by Wall. Found the handle, and the big fella has his first basket. Jarvis Bernardo has to have a big day, Brad. He's a primary on-ball screener for the three-point shots, but then he rim runs, and he must score off the rim runs. And we're going to have a foul on DeBoss to try to go up to steal that pass. Bernardo didn't have necessarily a very big game in the regular season outing. He did have 10 points, but only five rebounds, and he fouled out. There's the starters for Mississippi State, and you can see almost everybody in double figures. Cody Augustus just under. 83% of the points. They don't go very deep. Phil Turner, though, does come off the bench, and he had a pretty good game yesterday in the win in the semifinal to get here. Grant, all their offense, with the exception of Turner, is in the starting five. Another reason why they don't foul. 
They've had to play like this all season long. DeMarcus Cousins tied up by Cody Augustus. A double team pays off. Ball to the Bulldogs. That was great defense right there. Mississippi State to start the game. They are not going to double Patterson, but they're going to come hard with a double big to big on Cousins. DeMarcus Cousins has to realize it, Brad, and be a passer right now early. Kentucky trying to return the favor. Full court pressure forces a Mississippi State timeout. Augustus had nobody to pass it to and had to call timeout. Bulldogs early by one. State by one early, playing good defense. Grabbing to Marcus Cousins, get this basketball. Hold it right here, guys. You need to slide hard to the corner and be available, and someone fill. And watch what happens. There's the pass, the fill, and the cut. A little slow for DeMarcus Cousins. Partly on him, partly on his perimeter players, not getting into the passing alley early. Bosks on the dribble. Thought about a three and got it into Bernardo instead. Big sweeping hook shot. Patrick Patterson on the rebound. Wall on the run. All the way, and Bernardo took it away, blocked it, and kept it in play. Rayburn Johnson, a runner in the lane. Talk about being an excellent shot blocker. Like Bill Russell back in the day, just don't swat it out of bounds, keep it in play, and in that case, just pull it down yourself. The all-time best shot blocker in college basketball just erased one from one of the all-time great finishers in transition, John Wall. Wall wants a screen from DeMarcus Cousins. He's going to give it up to Bledsoe, who got bumped by Barry Stewart, and that's trouble. They don't want Barry Stewart in foul trouble, and he is right now. And he's heading toward the bench. I don't know if... Rick Stansbury is going to take him out yet. No, he wheels around now and comes back. I don't think he's going to be there long. Riley Beanox coming up to the scorer's table. So that's a tough break. Barry Stewart, one of your leaders, is going to have to sit down for a pretty good chunk of this half. Brad, he's, a, he's the best two-guard defender in the SEC. That's a big hit to Mississippi State early in this game. Patterson, baseline jumper. Got it. Patrick Patterson's first field goal. As the season has gone on, Patterson and Cousins and Miller and different guys, they have learned to space off of that dribble drive of John Wall. They don't get attracted to the basketball. Johnson will try another runner. This one won't go short. Cousins will clear it. Kentucky with a chance to regain the lead this trip. Bledsoe's wide open. Triple. Oh, he's missed two. He hit five yesterday. about seven seconds to advance the ball, DeBoss, trying to shorten the number of possessions in this game, which shortens the number of rebounds, which helps Mississippi State. Bernardo with Cousins on his hip. We'll have to give it back up. Beanox wide open. And Patterson ahead to Wall. Look at the speed of Wall. Oh, well, he ran into one, though. Beanox, another turnover. And Raven Johnson for three. He got it. You get him warmed up and look out. And John Calipari knows that. And Miss, uh, Mississippi State partners doing a great job of, of forming a wall against John Wall in the middle third of the floor. And Wall has to adjust his game right now because of it. Dotson picked up his dribble. Kentucky down four. There's the pick and roll. Cousins. Offensive foul to Marcus Cousins. So, Mississippi State holding their ground, and then some. John Calipari telling Tom Eads, what's this about? Fans don't like it. Bulldog fans would, though. First, their big guy blocks one, keeps it alive, and on the other end, their sharpshooter knocks down a three. Not loose before a game. The dancing in the hallway and then the John Wall move right there. That's what everybody in Lexington does now, the John Wall. <laughs> Loose <laughs> and confident is exactly what you want from your guys in March. What I'm impressed with, as young as they are, Brad, this is a greedy, hungry team for wins. They're not just satisfied with their playing time and all freshmen and all SEC awards. They want to win. 
And that's not easy to get young guys to buy into that in their first year on campus. Boss dribbled an entire circle for about 10 seconds. And that's Rayburn Johnson short on a three. Donnell Dotson with a rebound. He just checked in for Kentucky. All alone is Patrick Patterson. Somebody got a little bit lazy in transition on defense. Brad, that's the gamble of shooting 33s against Kentucky because they're going to be a lot of long rebounds, and that triggers Kentucky's run game. Boss double team. There's an open man because of it, but it's blocked by Patterson. Great recovery speed by Patterson. He's asking for the ball. And they didn't get it to him. Although, Mississippi State stepped on the baseline, so it'll still be Kentucky ball. Romero Osby comes in, and Raven Johnson gets a breather. Phil Turner out there also for Mississippi State. Mentioned he had a good game yesterday off the bench. Dodson stripped by Beanock. Loose ball picked up by Wall and tipped in finally by Orton. Kentucky rebounds about 45% of their misses. That's a very high percentage. Get it on the rim, give your bits a chance. They had a 40, rather a 52 to 35 advantage in the regular season in this matchup. That's a lot of rebounds. Of course, it was an overtime game, but nonetheless. Turner slips, loses the ball to Bledsoe. Wall coming the other way, 100 miles an hour. Patterson, the jumper. Comes free to Wall. Patterson, they try to strip him down low, and it doesn't work. Grant, he didn't ask for the ball. He demanded yeah. the basketball. That he did. And he's got seven points early. Boss trying to go in with all the tall timber. The follow won't go either, and this ball, who's going to get it? Phil Turner, the lob, and Osby missed in close. And now it's two on one, Wall and Patterson. Patterson, got it! with nine of Kentucky's 13. A team that thrives in the open floor. Long rebounds or quick shots that result almost in a turnover. Kentucky can dominate the game. Their speed and their size, I think, is unmatched in the college game right now. Watch Patrick Patterson on the left side of your screen. That is demanding the basketball. You're almost embarrassed if you're a perimeter player not to give it to him when he exposes his numbers that easily. And Patrick Patterson says, happy birthday to me. Let's check in with Janine Edwards, third member of our team. Well, Brad, as if Mississippi State would need any more motivation today, they were given an impromptu pep talk at breakfast this morning by 1996 SEC Tournament MVP Dante Jones. Jones was part of the Bulldogs team that beat number one ranked Kentucky in that title game as heavy underdogs. And Jones told me, I said to the guys, just have fun, savor the moment, and don't listen to the speculation. He said, we sure didn't. Not only did they win the SEC championship, made it all the way to the Final Four, Brad. Did they ever, that was quite a team. This is the defending tournament champion, Mississippi State. They won it last year. Barry Stewart, the three goes. Fresh off the bench with two fouls. And Dante's loving it. Right back to a one-point game. Jimmy mentioned they'll shoot threes until their arms are tired. They shot 35 threes in the regular season game against Kentucky. Zone now by Mississippi State. Kentucky will screen up top with some on-ball screening action. Still trying to get Wall into the lane. Liggins got his man in the air, and he goes airborne. Nobody can handle the hot basketball. 
It's out of bounds to Mississippi State when we return. We'll have a championship week update when we come back to Nashville as well. 11.07 till halftime. The Cats lead the Dogs by one. championship when we're done we'll start things off with the gmc sierra nba countdown at three and then the game to follow it's king james and the Cavs against kg and the celtics nba sunday showcase coming up when we're through here in nashville patrick patterson nine points and two rebounds already i think kentucky is a lock for the number two one seed Kansas will be the number one one seed, Kentucky the number two one seed. And following the S curve, they should be matched up bracket-wise with the number three two seed. And that should not be a West Virginia or Ohio State. I think they'll track higher than that. But that S, S curve, guys like John Calipari and Bill Self, guys that have been in that one two seed before, they start looking at those numbers right now. John Wall attempting that steal. Thought he had it and pounded the scores table on the other side. We talk about wanting to win a game. And here he is almost stripping the ball again, knocking it out of bounds. And now it's down to six on the shot clock. So the Bulldogs have to be aware of that. As Barry Stewart will inbound. Bledsoe's going to check back in, and Wall will get a quick breather. He plays a lot of minutes. Uh, John Wall has that same, I want to beat you as bad as I can mentality of Derrick Rose and Tyreek Evans. But John Calipari had it Memphis. Beanock fade away, got it. Nice shot with about three on the shot clock by Riley Beanock. And the Bulldogs back in front. Bledsoe throws a prayer up there, hoping that it's answered. Instead, he draws the foul. Jarvis Bernardo gets his first. I mentioned earlier, Bernardo fouled out of the first game this year in the regular season, as did Barry Stewart, who is playing with two right now. Mistake made by Jarvis Bernardo. Seldom do you see the all-time greatest shot blocker come down with his hands and his arms on top of an offensive player. He keeps a cushion from the ball and the rim. On, on that play, Brad, he came down over the top of Bledsoe, and it's the right call. Eric Bledsoe, six-foot freshman out of Birmingham. Got the second one to tie the game for the second time. Backcourt pressure from the Wildcats now. In Kentucky with more depth in this ball game. So you're going to keep the pressure on and try to wear down the legs of Mississippi State. Whoa, Cody Augustus went strong. DeMarcus Cousins went stronger. That was DeMarcus Cousins saying, you're not going to posterize me. Like trying to get a shot off over Shrek. He's going to protect that rim, and he is so good at taking charges that he can still elevate, and those broad shoulders are hard to deal with. Bernardo, nice move. Augustus tried to follow it. Kentucky's got numbers coming the other way. Ligon, spot up three. Got it. Oh, it's a two. Just inside the line. That's the confidence John Calipari wants out of every one of his guys. They get so many wide open looks because of the penetration of Bledsoe and Wall. And remember what he said to his players yesterday, especially in the second half. You get open, if you don't take it, you're coming to sit by me. Bernardo spins baseline, and that time Cousins called for the foul. Bernardo is quicker than DeMarcus Cousins, not stronger, but he is quicker. And Cousins has to understand, if you're going against someone quicker, you must keep a cushion. And that time, he allowed Bernardo's backside to get into his front side, and it was over. I wonder how long Cousins will have to sit now. So we've got a couple of starters. Barry Stewart on one side with the ball right now as he fades away for three and missed it. And DeMarcus Cousins, the big fella for Kentucky, on the bench with two fouls. Long stride by DeAndre Liggins. That was more like Leggins instead of Liggins. That yeah. was a lot of stretch yeah. there. Well, the North Carolina with Ty Lawson's speed on that team. They would score so many times with 32 or 33 on the shot clock. Kentucky's doing it as well. 
Up and down the court we go. Bledsoe just plain lost the handle to Raven Johnson. DeBoss open floor. And he slams it. Back to back buttons by DeBoss ties the game again at 18. How bad do you want it? How bad do you need it? They need it. That's the theme for Mississippi State that Kentucky has to overcome. 8.40 remaining first half, a good one for the SEC Tournament Championship at Bridgestone Arena. Kentucky ranked number two in the country, the top seed. Mississippi State, as Jimmy said, desperately needing a win. They assure themselves the NCAA, of course, if they win the SEC Tournament. They still might get in, but we don't know that. And we won't know that till later on tonight. The entry pass into Bernardo. Around Orton. Nice move. He's I'm not sure he can do that against Cousins, but he can yes. against Orton. Well, he's also quicker than Orton. And again, they get Jarvis Renardo, Brad, by slashing him to the block off of an on-ball screen and then a rim run. Just like the NBA teams use, that's how they use Renardo. Six straight for Mississippi State after being down by four. They're back in front. Patterson, just a touch pass to the other big guy. What a look by Patrick Patterson. Tied at 20. Boss slipped on his own, almost went down, but kept the dribble. Raven Johnson got the roll. Horton hit the last one. Horton hit the next one. The freshman from Oklahoma City has got six off the bench. He's their third option as far as bigs. That tells you the depth of this Kentucky team. The tallest team in college basketball. Bernardo put it on the floor. Miller took it away from him. Bledsoe hook around. Patterson had it stripped. Stewart, a triple. Got it. John Calipari is going, where are you guys, and why don't you know number 22 standing out here? It doesn't matter if, if you're assigned to that guy or not. You cannot let these Mississippi State team drill you from three in transition. Miller thought about a three. Patterson will take it. And it's in and out. Nice save, good hustle by Cody Augustus down in front of the photographers. Barry Stewart waiting for the fifth man to get into the front court. Under six minutes, Bulldogs lead by three. All they're doing is allowing guys like Bernardo to rest right now on offense. You rest on offense, not on defense, and Mississippi State is doing a good job of it. Boss missed a three, Bernardo long arm to rebound on the baseline, and that is goaltender. A little bit of a shock at Bridgestone Arena early. 5.39 till halftime. Bulldogs lead by five. SEC on ESPN. Tournament championship. Championship week presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Bulldogs by five. Kentucky, though, Jimmy, when they get in transition, can really fly. Brad, uh, again, I think they have more size and speed than anyone in the college game right now. They fly their wings and rim run their bigs. And it's off of a miss or a turnover. Once the floor is unbalanced, they attack the middle third of the floor, fly the wings, and rim run the bigs. Watch the shot clock this time in the lower right, how quickly they get it and how quickly they attack. And that's just a normal pace for this Kentucky team, scoring with 30 on the shot clock. Hard to deal with. That one took all of five seconds to get down the floor and in the basket. Biggest lead of the ball game by either team right now. Mississippi State by five. Wall works his way underneath and scores. That's his first basket. His ability to change speed, keep that basketball low. And once he wants to go, boom, he's got a surge and he's by you. 
Lost by the lane. Great shot up off the window, but he's going to have to earn it now from the free throw line. Barry Stevenson picked up the foul. Now Monday night, join Trey Wingo and company as the women's bracket will be announced exclusively on ESPN's NCAA Women's Basketball Selection Special, 7 o'clock Eastern time on Monday nights. Brad Nestler, Jimmy Dykes, Janine Edwards, and our ESPN on ABC crew from Nashville. I know this, Brad. When I start studying that bracket, I'm looking for teams that have just go make a play ability. John Wall has it. Scotty Reynolds from Villanova. Kevin Anderson, a young man from Richmond that the nation's going to learn about. Evan Turner, obviously. They Sean Butler last night. Go make me a play. Get it done. Those kind of teams are the ones I think will go deep. How about the interview with Huggy after that one? A little bit of emotion, huh? With his alma mater winning the Big East Tournament Championship. Dotson three. Got it. Donnell Dotson. That reposition of Dotson, Liggins, Miller. They may hold the final piece of the puzzle for Kentucky's national championship. And they're almost interchangeable pieces of that puzzle. Mississippi State by one. Augustus will try to make it four. But the three-pointer doesn't go. Stewart on the long carom knew exactly where that ball was coming. Right back out to the arc. So they'll get a fresh 35. Jimmy said a lot of long shots cause a lot of long rebounds, and that was the case on that last one. Augustus is in closer this time, and he still missed it. John Wall gives ahead to Bledsoe. Wall to follow. Wow, bodies all over the place. Just under four minutes remaining, first half. Mississippi State hanging tough and leading by one. Yeah. Just under four minutes to go in the first half. Mississippi State leading by one. He bossed again, slips, but Rayburn Johnson got the ball and the three. Ten for Rayburn Johnson. Patterson to get down low. Bledsoe's going to take it with a left hand, though, and roll it in. Kentucky has four guys that can dominate the game in stretches. Bledsoe, Patterson, Wall, and Cousins. Hard to guard. I know you were over there in the Kentucky huddle, Jimmy, at that last time out. John Calipari talking about, if I do go zone, I want to make sure we're all clear on our zone coverage. So he's flirting right now with the idea of going zone, but it's a dangerous thing as well as they shoot it. The other thing that stood out, again, there's a lot of talking going on, and John Wall stepped up and said, hey, hey, listen to Coach John Wall becoming the leader that John Calipari needs. Bledsoe took it coast to coast, and we're tied again. Let's check in with Janine on the Mississippi State huddle on the last time out. Well, Brad, early in the game, Coach Stansberry was telling his players to relax and settle down. During these last couple of timeouts, he's saying, guys, look, we got four minutes left. Don't let fatigue make you settle for something you don't want. They've been settling for a couple of long shots in the last two possessions and missed them both, but there was a foul on the last play on Perry Stevenson. So that gives the Bulldogs the basketball back with just over two minutes to go in the first half in an excellent first half really by both teams both shooting it pretty well hustling on defense we've been tied four times including right now at 31. Ah! oh perry stevenson sent one back turner the extra pass underneath and a slam by bernardo wow how about the strong hands of bernardo that was anyone's basketball set of soft paws also why he's such a great shot blocker can block him and keep him in play to go get loose balls around his knees. Wall. Liggins, a long stride, and the paint didn't get the roll, and Beanox got the rebound. Two on two, D Boss running by everybody. Johnson got it. And Liggins is going to sit down. 
As you might have seen, John Calipari said, get off, meaning get off the court if you can't play defense. Mississippi State by four. Lost. Rick's pretty much lost his voice after three days here at the tournament, so that might be part of the whispering. But here's a look at the last basket. Great job by Raven Johnson to turn down right there a challenge three and dribble into a good, tough two look. And you have to have a good balance in your offense against Calipari's defense. Get off. <laughs> that was DeAndre Liggins' lack of defense. Not sit down, just get off. <laughs> Brutally honest, didn't he? Yeah. John Wall missed the baseline jumper, and Mississippi State has the ball, the lead by four and one minute left in the first half. For at least 20 minutes, they're pulling off the upset. But we've got 20 more to go. I know Mississippi State is grouped in there with four or five teams for those last two spots. They pass my eye test every time I see him, with the exception of once this year. Patrick Patterson, another block shot. It comes the other way for Kentucky. Wall will try a three from the other side. Still no go. And the rebound falls in the hands of Bernardo after Patterson did all the work to get his hands on it. You take the very last shot of this half if you're Mississippi State. At the very worst, Brad, you go in up four. You don't shoot too early. You have the momentum. You've proven how bad you want it and how bad you need it. And finish off this half with a lot of momentum. Even a desperation shot or a bad shot sure. is better than giving it back to the guys in white. And they almost did. They do. One chance left for Wall. He didn't hurry enough. Almost. How close was that? Oh, 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 the momentum man. basket for Kentucky. Mississippi State is 19 and 3 when they lead at halftime. They have the lead, but they almost gave up a two. Wall with a great save. They get it back to him. And time expires before he can rattle one off the rim. Let's check in with Janine. Well, Brad, before the game, Coach Calipari told me that Mississippi State had you beat when you played them in Starkville. What do you need to see a little bit different from your team in the second half? Well, they're spacing us out right now, and they're coming in with the middle pick and roll, which is opening up the court, and they're getting to the rim. Uh, we left a couple shooters, which, you know, you talk about, but we just left guys. But short of that, I'm fine. We missed some shots we need to make. There's a couple post-ups. DeMarcus had a dumb foul to get a second foul. Down a couple baskets. We'll see. Let's play this half and see what happens. Thanks, Coach. And, of course, of course, Brad, they'd like to get John Wall more involved, too. 35-31. At halftime, Mississippi State trying to pull an upset as we head to John and Lab in the studio, guys. This is a Both teams shining with Kenny Chesney here in Nashville. It is their time. It's the SEC on ESPN. And the time remaining is 20 minutes to an SEC tournament champion. And it is championship week presented by Dick Sporting Goods, Mississippi State and Kentucky. And at halftime, it's Mississippi State trying to pull the stunner. 35-31, they're doing a good job of it. They've hit their three-pointers four so far as we take a look at our LG first half stats. Kentucky shot well, Jimmy, but Mississippi State has outplayed them so far. Kentucky, though, they also missed 15 shots and only got three offensive rebounds. And this is a Kentucky team that can dominate you on the boards. Mississippi State doing a good job of battling. How bad do you want it? How bad do you need it? Mississippi State has answered it the first 20 minutes. And Brad, think about this for Kentucky. Eight out of the last 12 national champions won their conference tournament. You want to win this thing if you're Kentucky and keep that big blue momentum rolling down the track. Remember DeMarcus Cousins, who had another double-double yesterday, his 19th of the year, only played eight minutes in the first half because of foul trouble. So you expect that he's going to become very much a factor before this one's over. Bledsoe waits for Wald to come around a pick. Gave it right back to Bledsoe for three. That's the way you start off the second half. Anytime a scorer is taking the ball out of bounds, you better lock in. And Kentucky just used it to get it done. Stewart 
had to pull up. And now in the lane, the ball is kicked. Still be Mississippi State ball. Watch what Eric Bledsoe does, Brad. He's taking the ball out of bounds, and he's going to go against the grain after he makes the pass. Watch it happen. There's the flow to the rim, the flow to the rim, the pass, the pop, and the result. And you can see Wall almost couldn't wait to get it over. Yeah. He knew right where he was going with it. Take a lot of patience by John Wall not to sell it early. Some traffic has to get it back outside. The Stewart down to seven on the shot clock. Time running out. Boss has to just put one up there and hope. The defense by Kentucky. So they got a three to open and a stop on the other end in the opening 52 seconds. And remember what John Calipari told us yesterday, and I'm sure he told his team the same thing today. First four minutes of the second half might determine what's going to happen. So far, they're winning the early battle. Mississippi State has already used two timeouts. No Rick Stansbury doesn't want to have to burn another one this first four minutes. Cousins, triple team. Wall is open for three. And Cousins got it back and put it home. Did we mention he'd probably be a factor in the second half? Kentucky by one. Great job by Cousins to spin out of that after he passed and get to the front of the rim. Again, his feet are so good, they lead him to great position on the floor. Stewart for three. Got it. Barry Stewart, the all-time leading three-point shooter in Bulldog history. Cousins the other way. In a hurry. And up and down the floor we go. Scoring again within four or five seconds on the shot clock is Kentucky. And this time it's Cousin. Rim to rim running by their bigs. Seventh tie of the ball game. First of this half. Boss again slips. He's done that about three times today. Big scramble for the ball. And Barry Stewart came out of the heap with it. Boss for three. John Wall right down the pike. Up, under, in. That is what makes John Wall, John Wall. Because they deleted his drive, but he refused to give up on it. Forced himself to the rim. That's what they call wall to wall. End to end. A timeout, Mississippi State. They're gonna use one regardless of their problems. And it has been wall to wall for a two point Kentucky lead. Big Blue's got something to cheer about, a lead in the SEC championship game by two. The freshman triple threat of Cousins, Bledsoe, and Wall has led the 9-3 run to open the second half. And it's their run game, Brad, even after a make. They're going to advance that ball up. Look at the shot clock, scoring at 33. That's North Carolina and Ty Lawson and Hansborough's speed from a couple of years back. Again, John Wall thrives on the middle third of the floor. They take it away. The nation's best all-time shot blocker is there, and Wall goes right at him. And because of that, Rick Stansberry had to use a timeout that he did not want to have to use the first four minutes. Now his team, with not much depth, only has two to go. You look up, nip it in the bud in the dictionary. You yep. see a picture of Don Knotts as Barney Fife and then Rick Stansberry right there. <laughs> Because you don't want this team to get on a roll, and he had to burn that timeout you were talking about. Patrick Patterson picks up his first foul. Green SEC tournament, Mississippi State, number two in the nation, only 14 fouls a game, sixth in the nation, making 9.2 threes per game. Number 10 in the nation, field goal percentage defense. Again, their eye test and their stat test, they pass with me. I know they're grouped in there right now with four or five teams, but they are an NCAA-worthy team when I watch them play. They've got six fouls today. Speaking of three-pointers, they have five of those. They lost last year after winning the SEC tournament to Washington in the NCAA tournament. Kentucky, of course, didn't make the NCAA tournament, which is against everybody's religion in the bluegrass. This year, they'll be a number one seed. But will they go in as tournament champions? We'll find out. And Cousins clears it to Bledsoe. Part of that's why you change preachers. <laughs> right? <laughs> Good point. 
Mississippi State turns it over, but Kentucky doesn't capitalize yet. They run it down, have it knocked out of bounds. Bledsoe will trigger. Remember last time he came right back, took the shot. This time John Wall will set a play. Cousins wants it. Has to give it up to Dodson for three. And Barry Stewart with the long rebound. Raven Johnson had a good first half with 12 points and three boards. Back to back Bulldog turnovers. Kentucky's top eight grad, zero, zero NCAA tournament experience. They're getting a great feel for what it's going to feel like next week. Good move by Patterson. Didn't quite connect. Kind of had the ball slip on him a little bit as he went baseline with that hook shot. Let's check in with Janine. Well, Brad, during halftime, Coach Rick Stansberry told me that he is really, really worried about transition defense, and that's why he called that timeout a minute or so ago. He told his guys, look, we have given up 16 points now in transition. He also told me he's seeing some signs of fatigue, especially from his point guard. He said, if you can't muster up another 20 minutes, you can rest tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Well, DeBost is only a sophomore, and he plays a ton of minutes. Rest tomorrow. Out, out of necessity. Kwani Beckham, their backup point guard, was lost for the year in the preseason with an Achilles injury. And D. Boss, he has managed 36, 37 minutes a game for the past five months. Now he needs to manage another 16 minutes to try to finish this thing off. Kentucky has matched its biggest advantage. Up four. Didn't last long, did it? Fresh enough legs to knock down a three on the baseline. Wildcats by one. Cousins works against Bernardo, draws a double team, and that left Patterson coming in the back door. Remember the first possession of this ball game, Cousins got doubled and didn't know what to do with it. He's learned that this game has progressed. What a pass on time, on target. Trying to feed it into Bernardo, and Patrick Patterson had a hold of his jersey a little bit. Says Tom Eats. Patterson picks up his second personal. Now the big guy, Demarcus Cousins, learning as Jimmy said, and the birthday boy Patrick Patterson hammers it home for his 13th point. Hey, fans don't like basketball. This was at halftime. These ladies are outside. Hold up. They they need two <laughs> tickets to get in here to watch 20 minutes of basketball. You know what they did? Or didn't do? They didn't set the clock forward. There you go. They missed it by an hour. I told everybody yesterday you could miss <laughs> a half if you didn't spring forward. You can see all the blue in Bridgestone Arena. It is packed with Kentucky blue. But right now it's the maroon and white that are making their play to stay right in the ball game. Bernardo's got 10 now. Mississippi State played the socks off of Kentucky in Starkville to the tune of an overtime loss, and they're giving Kentucky all they want, not on a neutral floor, on a home floor for Kentucky in Nashville. Dodson, the runner on the baseline, rebounded by Barry Stewart. Barry Stewart and Jarvis Bernardo have played more games in that maroon uniform than anybody else in the history of Mississippi State and Starkville. Barry's hit more three-pointers than anybody. Jarvis Bernardo has blocked more shots than anybody ever in college basketball. Here he is on offense. Oh, wow! Around and under the outstretched arms of DeMarcus Cousins. And Bernardo with back-to-back -back baskets. He continues to cause Cousins problems with his quickness. He went around before he could go up and under. Patrick Patterson, tough catch in deep. And he has it rejected by Bernardo. Kentucky fans were looking for a foul, didn't get it. Oh, State can really spread you out. Look at that offense, all five guys. Now Bernardo's going to creep inside the three-point line a little. Spreading you out and controlling the pace with this offense. All the guys on the floor, with the exception of Bernardo, can strike from deep. They're all good shooters. There's Patrick Patterson says, what Bernardo does, I can do as well. 
And DeMarcus Cousins hits the deck trying to save the ball. They slice Bernardo off of a rim cut. And then again, he's just he's quicker than DeMarcus Cousins. DeMarcus Cousins has the strength factor. Bernardo has the speed factor. And two or three times in this game, Bernardo has gone right around DeMarcus Cousins. But what a finish. He put a spin that was about 16 feet in the air on that ball to get it to drop. Barry Stewart's going to have to hustle, and it's over and back. And John Wall with a nice job defensively forcing that Mississippi State turnover. Joe Lenardi's bracketology updated to the minute, I guess. Would Minnesota, you? Virginia Tech, Utah State in. Mississippi State would be out. Of course, they win this, they're in. Brad, he's been so accurate over the years. I don't agree with Utah State and Virginia Tech over there, though, in the in department. And Mississippi State on the outside right now looking in. Those resumes of those six teams are going to look so similar. And I watch Mississippi State play and see how they can play, and they've proven they can play with the best in the country. Mississippi State should be on that left side of that graphic. Joe's not here 20 feet away from these guys that we're watching. They're pretty good. Off the backboard, three-pointer won't go. Wall's got another rebound. And Virginia Tech got nothing done in non-conference play. Bernardo, nice strip that time instead of a block shot. He ripped it from Cousins before he could go airborne with it. Watch Bledsoe again. Remember the last time he took it out? Wall backs it out. 13 minutes to play. Mississippi State. Try to pull a shocker, as they did a year ago. Blitzel had to adjust his shot twice and got it off the glass. Stewart, heavy traffic. Cousins blocked the shot. Out of bounds to Mississippi State. Rick Stansbury just hit the deck over there, I think, didn't he? <laughs> I don't know if John Wall ran into him or what. Watch this. Yeah, you're right about the adjustment. The athletic ability of Eric Bledsoe. That's yep. John Wall and Rick Stansberry. Just a meeting. Oh, that's, 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 that's a hard that's collision. A tough one. Oh. Wow, going to be on Cousins. And that is three on the big fella. Leading his case with Ted Valentine to no avail. The National Defensive Player of the Year, in my opinion, Bernardo. A factor offensively, and again, they continue to let him set on ball screens and then the pro sprint to the rim. He's not going to sit on anybody's legs, Brad, on that low post to get his touches. They keep him moving, and that's the best way for Bernardo to be effective against DeMarcus Cousins. There's his numbers today, 12-5-2. He's a guy that can get a triple-double on you if he starts blocking shots in a hurry. Cousins will sit now, and Orton will come in. Cousins with three personals. We'll get a quick breather. I don't think he'd be over there very long. Jarvis got them both. 14 for Bernardo and Mississippi State back in front by one. Seesaw back and forth. Seven ties. A bunch of lead changes. 13, in fact. Mississippi State in the zone. Let's go. No other two guys, you better shade. Miller for three. That's way short. Barry Stewart's got another rebound. Barry Stewart have a knack of knowing where to find the ball on a long rebound or what? You know what? J just like he plays defensively, he sees the play, one pass or one rebound ahead of everybody else. Great vision, a high IQ by this kid with the ball up top. Talking about Barry Stewart and Jarvis Bernardo. They're both playing in their home state, by the way, too. Jarvis from Brownsville and Barry Stewart from Shelbyville, Tennessee. Stevenson on a trailer from Wall. Everybody getting in the act, and John Wall says, you're all dressed in blue, you might as well stand up. Rayburn Johnson a triple. Got it! His third of the game, 15 for Raymond Johnson. Mississippi State by two. 
It is so hard to put a team away when they wake up this morning like Mississippi State knowing we have to win this game. How bad do you want it? How bad do you need it? Continues to be the theme for these kids from Starkville. Wall trips going around Beanock. And now Beanock with the foul. Two point game, 10 57. Don't think it's a contact sport. And I'm not talking about the hug on Ted Valentine. I'm talking about having a wall run you over. This presentation of the SEC term on ABC continues after this message and a word from our ABC station. Stick around. You see all the blue in here. 20,082 on hand at Bridgestone Arena. Here's a blind resume for all of you. you just look at the numbers which favor the team on the right. RPIs are about the same. It's way too close to call. Strength of schedule obviously shaded to the team on the right. Depending on what conference they're in and who those teams were against. Uh -huh. And it would be Minnesota. I, I, I would put Mississippi State and Minnesota in right now over those other three teams that are being considered. They've played their way into the conference title game. I think that holds some water right now. Right now, Tubby Smith's former team, Kentucky, trailing Mississippi State by two. It's academic if the Gophers in Mississippi State win their games. They're going as champions of the Big Ten and the SEC, respectively. But we still got ten and a half minutes to determine that right here. Augustus on the drive against Norton. Had it stripped and lost it. John Wall on the dribble. Kentucky looking to tie it up or lead if that goes. It won't. And the loose ball comes to Augustus. I think Kentucky's going to have to make two or three more threes in this game if they're going to win it. Because Mississippi State's going to give them those looks. They only have one in this half. Here comes John Wall and he's dangerous. On the fly for the tie and they will go to the free throw line. That is four fouls on Cody Augustus. Let's check in with Janine Edwards. Janine. Well, Brad, during that last time out, Coach John Calipari was calling a play for his team, and immediately Eric Bledsoe spoke up and pointed to his board, and then John Wall chimed in, and it seemed the two of them talked Calipari out of a certain play because Calipari then said, okay, okay, that's a good idea. We'll do that. Getting a little help from the two 19-year-olds. Exactly. Right? That's a sign of a confident coach. And I think the, the best coaches... They do take the time to listen and oh, what are you guys seeing on the floor or what are you feeling right now? And this is much of a coach with your feeling game as anything. That's a good move by Coach Cal. That's why you're such a great analyst and such a great partner because you listen when I tell you something. I, mean, I do for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> when John Wall changed, see how, see how changed uh, what we're talking about just like that. Yeah, nice, nice transition. When Very smooth segue, Jimmy. When John Wall goes from his right hand to his left hand in transition, that's where he really gains speed. You've got to get on that before it happens. Boss bounce pass is a dangerous one. He somehow regained it, then lost it. Here comes Wall for the lead. Nope, short. And a blocking foul. He'll go back to the free throw line. And that is three on Barry Stewart. So Mississippi State's had a couple of costly turnovers, two of their last three trips down court, including this one. Or Wall has really grown as a defender. There's that move again from the right to the left. That's when he gets his surge. And that surge is what got the block call on Stewart. He's only got five points today. John Wall. But it's the other things that he does that have made it a very now big six points. Brett, he's leading this team. He's led them all season long. As far as his, his points and his assists, he wants the, the ball in his hands to close out ball games. But he's leading them in the huddle, in the locker room, on the team bus, at the pregame meal. John Wall has taken control of this team. And Patrick Patterson, the upperclassman, has done a good job of letting John Wall assume that role. Leads him in the dances in the hallway, in fact. We're tied at 50. Patterson. Way off on the three-pointer, but Kentucky will have the basketball. 
So Mississippi State has had two turnovers in the front court, one in the back court after that last rebound, and now a loose ball that could have been and probably should have been theirs comes out of bounds back to the Wildcats. Dotson. Mississippi State holds on to that rebound. They get it out of that corner. That was a trap waiting to happen. It sure was. Right. So in Patterson. That's a problem when you have more turnovers than makes against the number two team in the country. Can you overcome it? Bosch will take the baseline jumper off the side of the window. Wasn't a good percentage shot. But too much traffic there with him. Ooh, that pass had some smoke on it. I hope that cheerleader ducked in time down there as Kentucky throws it away as well. What Mississippi State is doing to Kentucky is what Kentucky's going to face in the NCAA tournament. Shortening the length of the game, packing in the defense, doesn't matter if it's man or zone, you can do the same thing off of it, and forcing Kentucky to become a perimeter ball club. There's the numbers that back it up. Oh, nice look inside of Bernardo from Bost. Bulldogs back in front by two, and we're under eight minutes. I'm Kentucky. I want more movement out of my zone offense right now. Get guys cutting and moving. Be aggressive. A little too stationary. Cousins missed it with the left hand, and Mississippi State's got the rebound. John Calipari didn't like something out there, and there's somebody coming in in a hurry. And D. Boss crosses the timeline, Brad, with 27 on the shot clock. They have taken away three or four possessions in this game by their pace. And Barry Stewart backs it up near midcourt. Ten now on the shot clock. He'll go to work. Stewart to Turner from way out. Marcus Cousins got mugged by Bernardo that time. He'll be going to the free throw line to tie, try to tie this game when we come back to Nashville in a moment. Right now, the senior Jarvis Bernardo with Barry Stewart and company leading the way and the game. How'd that guy with a Long Beach State sweatshirt get in there, I wonder? I think the Wildcat fans would have kept him out of that bar. <laughs> Well, they're enjoying it in Nashville. Rex Chapman, UK alum, taking in the game. Young man, I had the pleasure of coaching for a couple of years That's when right. I was an assistant at Kentucky. One of the all-time greats to put on a Kentucky uniform. There's been a lot of them. Don't forget, Celtics and Cavaliers follow us. Actually, we'll start things off with the GMC Sierra NBA countdown at 3, and then the Celtics and Cavs have added at 3.30. DeMarcus Cousins, who had trouble from the free throw line yesterday, he went 7 of 17, but he knocks down his first attempt of the day here, and another one would tie things up again. Brad, Kentucky will be in the bonus from here on out on the next team foul by Mississippi State. And Kentucky has only fouled three times this half, so they can be aggressive with 6.52 to go and have a little bit of room to breathe. Ninth tie of the basketball game, if you think it hasn't been a good one. And we hope you've been with us in the entirety of this one. It's seesaw back and forth between the number two team in the country and the number one seed, Kentucky, and the upstarts from Starkville. The Bulldogs of Mississippi State, 10 on the shot clock. Turner, long ball. Bernardo, tough rebound. Still can't get it to go. And now it's boss to Raven Johnson. His three is short. Finally, hey. Turner underneath on a play by Boss that kept it alive. That's what great point guards do. They see it before it happens. And D. Boss just saw it before anyone else did. That's the first thing you think about with a Bulldog. They're relentless. These guys aren't going yes. anywhere. Good call. Bledsoe for the lead. Got it! Some feisty catch, too, huh? 55-54, Kentucky. Not a doubt in my mind, Kentucky can't hang their eighth national championship banner this year in Rupp Arena. They have all the pieces. 
And if they make just enough threes, they can get it done because everywhere else on the floor, defensively, rebounding, size, and speed in transition, they're 10 out of 10. Two of the three threes that they have that come from freshman Eric Bledsoe, including that last one that put him up a point. Poise right now for Mississippi State. Poise. Barry Stewart missed a three, might have gotten fouled by Ramon Harris, but no call. And now John Wall against Bernardo rejected his fourth block shot of the day. 162 on the year. Debossed, wide open triple. Yes! Seventeenth lead change. Mississippi State by two. Under five to go. Bost with a bump. His second foul. John Wall takes it right in to the all-time best shot blocker in the history of the college game. And he doesn't elevate and get up in the air enough to challenge him. And D. Bost, terrific transition, settled in three. It was in rhythm when he let the release. Comes the other way, hobbling just a little, Brad. Four of the eight field goals in the second half for Mississippi State have been three-pointers. He led the league this year, making over nine per game. Came in with 300 oh. on the season into this game, which is a school record that they broke, that they set last year. Sixth in the nation, making over nine threes per game. Again, the eye test and the stat test. Mississippi State passes with me. Wall missed the front of a one and one. So it leaves the Bulldogs in front by a deuce. Red Kentucky making cover. Harris with a foul. Stuck in with Janine quickly. Well, Brad, during that last time out, Jarvis Bernardo looked physically spent. He was huffing and puffing on the bench, and Rick Stansbury looked at him and said, are you okay? And then he said, six minutes left. Six minutes, that's it. Who's got the will? There you go. That's exactly what it's come down to. Now to 429, in fact. Jarvis Bernardo playing his final SEC tournament game out of Brownsville, Tennessee, which is about... 150 miles from Nashville. Barry Stewart, another Tennessee native, missed the jumper. Patrick Patterson with a rebound. Bledsoe dribbled into some traffic, but luckily for him, he drew a foul. Boy, Wall and Bledsoe now. When they come down the right side of the middle third and shift to the left lane, they pick up a head of steam now and put a lot of pressure on your defense. They are so good at understanding where the pressure point is on the floor in conversion from defense to offense. You see with all that coaching of John Calipari, got a smile halfway through that to John Wall. He's still talking to him. <laughs> the other four guys don't matter right now. They will after these free throws. But for now, his point guard got about two minutes of coaching face to face. Brad, you have to enjoy the pursuit of winning. If the, if the joy of winning is not there, you're not going to get it done. Wall missed the front end of a one and one and now Bledsoe has done likewise, and Mississippi State still has a two-point lead with a timeout. 4-10 to go. Can the Bulldogs hold on and pull off the stunner? Mississippi State, Minnesota, Florida, and Virginia Tech, and I think it would go in that order from what I've seen. We had a lot of tides and lead changes. The first go around in Starkville, same story today. Underneath, and a slam for Bernardo. What a play out of a timeout. A three-point shooting ball club gets Bernardo on a rim run when they had to have it. They match their halftime advantage of four. Wall, the dip around, trying to get it to Patterson. And now we've got the TV timeout with 3.41 to play. And the lead for the Bulldogs has extended to four. Red, you rim run Bernardo in some form of action. He's not going to sit on your knees. A dribble handoff. Now slicing to the block and let him go to work. Great job by Rick Stansberry out of a timeout to get a tough two. All right, John here. 3.38 left. DeMarcus Cousins 
And a tie-up. Bernardo again prevents the big fella from scoring. Bernardo will never be the first guy off the floor. You can pump fake him all you want. He's not going to bite. Fifth block to go with seven rebounds and 18 points. Barry Stewart and company taking their time. Want that clock to go down under 10, which it has. Rayburn Johnson, oh, trying to get it inside. Patrick Patterson, nice defense, turns him over. Cousins double team. Wall in the lane, and he's put to the floor by Bernardo. He missed his last two free throws, and in fact, is only two for five, John Wall. And the third personal foul on Bernardo. That time he got a little buried underneath the rim and allowed Wall to get into him. Bernardo's so good at keeping a cushion on the ball and the rim. He feels them both well. So the freshman from Raleigh at the free throw line. For some reason, you just know when they really, really matter, he's going to knock them down. And right now, every shot, every point, every possession really matters. Out of all the guys on this floor right now, John Wall wants the basketball more than any of them. Fearless. Got them both. Two-point game. Everybody up except Jimmy and I. And I'm thinking about it. <laughs> that JD's still down, too, over here doing stats. Poise right now for Mississippi State. You've done it to get yourself to the finals and 2.30 away from an automatic bid. Raven Johnson, three! Wow! That goes your poise. Mississippi State by five. Timeout. Raven Johnson's fourth three of the ball game. Brad, what I love about Rayburn Johnson, great confidence, and he's 6'7". Patrick Patterson at 6'9", was right in his grill to try to take away his vision. But he's 6'7", and he explodes into his shot. And a big shot by Mississippi State. And remember, in the regular season, an overtime loss in Starkville, Rayburn Johnson didn't play in that game because the previous game, he felt he was shorted on playing time against Auburn, didn't show up for practice. Rick Stansbury, the most important regular season game for him, sat him down. He's not sitting now, he's shooting. That goes back to what we talked about in the Open, Brad. Kentucky with more talent, more depth, more tradition. The Mississippi State has the how bad do you want it, how bad do you need it factor going for them today. Plus, they're a darn good basketball team. They can stroke it from distance, the best shot blocker of all time, and right now, Kentucky is on their heels against the Bulldogs. Let's see if they can get off those heels in the next 220. Usually John Wall time. It has been so far this season. Cousins, again double teamed and stripped of the ball by Turner. So pesky, they have just surrounded DeMarcus Cousins today. It's like a maroon fence around him every time he touches the ball. That's the only guy Mississippi State has game plan to double team. They've left Patrick Patterson one on one. He has not made him play. Boys again right now by Mississippi State. Stewart against Wall, senior against the freshman. Seven on the shot clock. Barry Stewart pull up mid range. Rebound is Dotson's. Down to a minute and a half. Kentucky's going to have to start to hurry pretty soon. Dodson, three. Off the mark. Patterson keeps it alive and scores. Well, let John Calipari tell his guy, shoot it with confidence and let us go rebound and miss. One of the strengths of this club. Oh, the throw into Bernardo Cousins hit the deck. They're a big man short Kentucky defensively right now, but Cousins hustles back in there. Maybe too late. He had to get up from underneath 
the radio stations down to our right, DeMarcus Cousins I'm talking about, got back defensively but ended up a little bit too late, and that's why that happened. But Brad, great effort by DeMarcus Cousins. You're exactly right. That play had a three or four second head start on him in Big 15, committed to run, saves a guaranteed two. Jarvis Bernardo has been the star of the game so far with 18 points. He's hit both of his free throws. But he missed that one. Brad, he's shooting into a lot of crowd noise and a big Blue Nation background. This is a neutral floor game on paper. It's a home game for Kentucky in person. If he gets his stroke back here, it would be a two-possession game. If not, just three. He's tired. He's got to get his legs into this shot. Taking his time. Missed them both. Kentucky only down three with one minute to go. But he doesn't need a three right now. He needs to get a shot up and at worst get an offensive rebound. That should go up right now. Cousins. Book won't go. Bernardo had a hand on it. Lost it, but Bost picked it up. And Bledsoe's going to foul Bost. Don't forget, Celtics and the Cavaliers follow us. Ebos still down. Has to hit the deck on that foul by Bledsoe. He'll limp his way down to take free throws. That looked like a cramp with the way he grabbed his toes and pulled him back, sitting on the ground. That's not going to just go away. As long as you can't shake off. I beg your pardon. There won't be free throws. Right. They're not over the limit yet. You stay aggressive right now. The next one. Mississippi State will shoot a one and one. So we've got a timeout here with 43 seconds remaining. Gives us a chance to check back in the studio with John. All right, John, thanks. LeBron took in a game in Lexington at Rupp Arena this year to watch John Wall and DeMarcus Cousins and Patrick Patterson and company. There's the reset. One timeout remaining for Mississippi State. They've got the possession arrow as well. It's a three-point difference right now. Brad, this will not be an easy inbound for Mississippi State. Right in front of Kentucky's bench. So the pass is going to be dealing with a little bit of a crowded sidelines over there. Maybe a little John going on behind him right now talking to him. But Mississippi State's going to have to fight for their catch right now. Riley Beanock will be the trigger man. That's a tough spot. Dodson with those long arms in front of him. It is a tough spot. So tough it was stolen by Wall. And he scores! The most difficult place to inbound the basketball to close out a game in front of the other team's bench. Lead down to one. About two seconds difference. Shot clock and game clock. Foul on Blitzo. Don't want to run to that corner, but because the court has been cut into a third, sometimes you're forced to go to this direction. A bad pass, and John Wall, his progression as a defender, and more importantly, his will to win, might have just made the play that Kentucky had to have. And now free throws that DeBost has to have on the other end. And he missed it. Kentucky has got the ball. Down just one. SEC Tournament Championship is at hand in the next 20 seconds. Will Cal take a timeout? He told us earlier this year he didn't want to save him in his back pocket. Wall. Short. Mississippi State's got the rebound and a quick foul. Barry Stewart again. How many big rebounds has that young man come up with today? Long ways from over, though. 8.2 seconds is a long time. You know, the on-ball screen by Patterson didn't completely free up John Wall. A, a great defensive play by DeBoss to get over the top of it, and he forces John Wall into a pretty tough two because it wasn't a completely clean look. And you're right about the rebound, an undersized, scrappy team, but they get speed and quickness rebounds. Can they close it off from the strike? Barry Stewart's the best three-point shooter 
Mississippi State has ever seen. Right now, he just wants free throws, and he got one. Kentucky will have a chance either way to tie this game, depending on this next free throw. We'll hustle back to John Saunders in the studio, and then we'll hustle back to Nashville when John's done. All right, John, thanks. So Duke on their way to a number one seed. Kentucky on their way to a number one seed. Can Mississippi State even get a bid? We're about ready to find out. 8.2 seconds. They can assure themselves if they can win back-to-back -back SEC tournament titles. They're the defending champions. But in their way, the Big Blue looking for their 26th SEC tournament title. And it all comes down to 8.2 seconds. You start practicing in October. You go through the dog days of February. You hit March Madness. And with eight seconds left, here we are. Mississippi State with no one on the free throw strike. Kentucky, if they get the rebound, they won't have a lot of pressure to deal with, Brad. Stewart got them both, but Kentucky is only three down. With eight seconds left, here they come, and there goes another timeout for John Calipari. Well, at South Carolina, when Kentucky got beat, John Calipari had two timeouts in his pocket when he got on the bus. And he told me the next day on the phone, I made a mistake with a young club. I can't trust them to understand everything about closing out a ball game. So from that point on, he has kept a timeout in his back pocket for this type of situation to use it, get everyone on the same page. They have to have a three right now. If you're Mississippi State, the other end, you're talking about foul. Do you foul? Yep. Certainly. And have you practiced it? And can you trust your team? It's easy for us right now to say, yes, Mississippi State, go foul. But you know what? Rick Stansberry knows his guys better than anyone else. He knows what his guys are capable of and what they're not. Have they practiced it? If so, if you have a chance to get them with five seconds or less around the timeline, you get it done. And of course, they're going to try to run Kentucky, especially Bledsoe, around some screens to try to get him outside the arc. They've got Dotson, who's a good three-point shooter. Wall can hit him at times. And it is the starting five on the floor for Kentucky. Here we go. Eight seconds. Cousins to inbound to Bledsoe. Stewart's on his hip. Bledsoe is fouled, and Stewart fouls him with 4.9 to go. That is a great job of fouling by Mississippi State. Barry Stewart was able to work three seconds off that clock and fouled even before Bledsoe was able to get into a shooting motion. Watch the patience by Barry Stewart. The best two-guard defender in this league. Boom, right now. Excellent job by Barry Stewart. The only bad part for Barry Stewart, it's his fifth foul. And should this game get to overtime, he's the guy you want out there all the time. Bledsoe at the free throw line, where he's only one of three today. You take that one, and now, do you miss this one? On purpose. They have time to make still, I think, and foul quickly. They're going to miss it. He missed it. Whoa! He's got it! The shot will count, but it's short. Oh, wait a minute, Cousins. It's good. It's good. It's good. They'll go to the monitors to make sure. Tom Eads. And Ted Valentine are at the monitor. From here, it looked good. Tom Eads signaled it good when the play went down. If it's good, we're going to overtime, as we did in the regular season between these two teams. Here's another look. There's the miss on purpose. It's Wall. He'll miss the shot, but look at Cousins. Up. Looks good. What do you think, partner? Clock light horn is what they're going to go by. We can't see it because the official's there. I can't see the clock because the official's right now. The part that looked just a little delayed is because the ball bounced on the back of the iron. There's the light. The ball is already up there. It took its time, but it went in. 
I, I think it's going to be good. I do it, too. It can't be any closer than this, but I think it's going to be good. Boy, it's a great miss, first of all, by Eric Bledsoe to get that thing up softly. You see Tom Eads say good, good, and he says good again. Overtime in Nashville. How bad do you want it? How bad do you need it? We need five more minutes. I go back to Eric Bledsoe's miss, Brad. Big part of it. The freshman finishes it off. The SEC tournament on ABC continues after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Overtime at Bridgestone Arena. Mississippi State and Kentucky at 64 because of this. Brad, watch Eric Bledsoe shoots it high and soft. Doesn't fire it off the backboard of the rim and gives his team a chance. And DeMarcus Cousins, the streak of this team, they rebound 45% of their misses. That's how we're in overtime. Remember, Barry Stewart fouled out in regulation. I mentioned that when he had his foul and said, should it get to this point, they would certainly love to have number 22 out there. They don't. Lob to Bernardo. Stolen by Wall. Foul on Dina. At the end of regulation, Rick Stansberry plays the percentages by fouling. But he'll look back on it now and think, you know, Kentucky's not a great three-point shooting team. Right. But I played the percentages, and it didn't go my way. They have to flush it out of their system and get back to battling in this ball game. And it only didn't go his way by a tenth of a second. Yes. John Wall with a free throw. The ball is gone. Yeah. You see the point one up off the window, then bounces on the back of the iron and through. Good call by the officials and a good job to take several good looks at it by our guys in the truck to be sure. 30 seconds into overtime, Kentucky leads. And does Mississippi State miss the NCAA tournament by a tenth of a second? Would that be a shame? Found a little crease. Bledsoe fouled him. And again, he's limping around out there. Bledsoe picks up his third foul. No backup for D. Boss. Hasn't had it all year. He was exhausted with four minutes to go in regulation. Remember, he and Bernardo missed three free throws between the two of them. And he missed another one. Fatigue could definitely be a factor. But he's got to find some bend in those legs somewhere to try to make it a one-point game again. One of two. Wildcats by one. Mississippi State will stay in that zone. Force Kentucky to shoot threes. Conserve whatever energy they can on the defensive end of the floor. Wall lost the handle. And Bernardo rips it. Out of the middle. Mississippi State's got a chance to regain the lead. You can see Bernardo is the last guy down. Big guys very often are, but you can see, as Janine said earlier, he's dragging. And now he's still got three and a half minutes to go. Boss got it! Gutsy point guard play there. Bledsoe looking for a foul, didn't get the call. Under three and a half minutes remaining in overtime. You talk about ten tired troopers on the floor. You're looking at them. not a lot of motion out of Kentucky's offense or Mississippi State's defense. Bledsoe thought about a three, but packs it down to Patterson. Dotson's jumper. 
Rebounded by Bernardo. Steve Austin to bring this across the timeline. At 27 seconds. And continue to shorten this game. They've done a great job of it, partner, all game long. Beanock. Missed the three. Bernardo had a hand on it. Whoa, he and Orton get tangled up. We got bodies all over the place. Four on four the other way. John Wall. Tips. They're going to call goaltending on Turner, I think. Turner will inbound, but here was his defensive play. Got a tip of it, didn't he, on the way down? Right there. Right there. Yep. Right there. Turner only 6'3. Gives you all he can out of that four position. Kentucky back in front by one. And now we're under two and a half. 20th lead change of the ball game. Both teams playing their hearts out. Bernardo with a ball screen action. That has been their best offense of the day. Rayburn Johnson waits for the traffic to go by, but he missed the three. And Orton's got a rebound. And Bernardo's got a foul. Four on Bernardo. That sounds this close. Yep. It cannot be any closer. Mississippi State lost in overtime to Kentucky about three weeks ago in Starkville. Now the guy that got him there is at the free throw line to try to stretch Kentucky's one point cushion. Had trouble from the stripe yesterday as we talked about. Two for three today. Kentucky's good on missed free throws. They can run some spin plays on you. You better check them. We got the second. Wildcats by two. And we're under two in overtime. SEC championship on the line. Kentucky will be a number one seed in the NCAA. Mississippi State trying to assure themselves of a trip. Johnson's been so good curling off of that down screen action in this ball game. Not settling for challenge threes, but taking and making tough twos. Tied for the 11th time with 90 seconds left. John Wall trying to get in the middle of the floor. Bledsoe will and score. Raven Johnson back to Bernardo. They play catch and now Bernardo got loose. Patterson though got a piece of it. We're under a minute in overtime. Good play by Mississippi State, though. Again, slicing Bernardo to the rim off of an on-ball action. Rick Stansbury is closer to midcourt than John Wall is, I think. Wall takes his time. And will start to move at around 10. Here he goes. Kick out. Ramon Harris back to Wall. Wall's got a force one. And it goes! Johnson trying to get open for a three. Missed it. Tip. Bernardo missed it. Again, inside, and finally it goes. Smallest guy on the floor got it up there. In March, you have to have a guy that can go make you a play. John Wall can go make you a play. What a shot. You see the reaction on the Kentucky bench. It's not over yet, though. 5.8 to go. Georgia Tech not going away. Mississippi State not going away. Championship week, what a week it's been. Presented by Dix. This is the SEC tournament title.
Some huge plays in this game, including the one that sent it to overtime right here. Wall with a miss. Cousins with the putback with point one. That sent it to overtime. And then Wall, a desperation three that goes. And that's where we are, 74-71 in overtime. With the Celtics and Cavs coming up, Jimmy, this isn't the NBA, but 5.8 still a lot of time. It is. Kentucky with pressure to get it in. Mississippi State can go for a steal and a quick foul, and there it is. There's the quick foul from Boston. It'll send the guy they'd like to have at the free throw line, more than likely, DeMarcus Cousins, back to it. But DeMarcus, after struggling yesterday, is three for four today. One here should do it. The freshman of the year in the SEC. Wow. Missed it. Now the all-important one. Remember, Mississippi State, the best three-point shooting team in the conference, and one of the best in the land if the second free throw doesn't go. And it doesn't. No, it does. He got it. A thud on the back of the rim might be his second big shot of the day. Beanock is good at the buzzer, but it's not enough. The Cats prevail over the Dogs. Another SEC tournament title for the Big Blue of Kentucky. And was it enough for Mississippi State in a valiant effort to make the NCAA the problem for them today? They ran into a wall. John Wall. How bad do you want it? How bad do you need it? Mississippi State left it all on the floor. But again, John Calipari, on the first day of practice, he pulled me over and said, Jimmy, I'll take talent over experience any time in March. And the talent got it done today for Kentucky. And there's a lot of talent in that young body. Our ING player of the game is John Wall. You saw his numbers. His desperation three in the waiting moments of overtime gave him just the cushion they needed. And the other freshman, the freshman of the year, DeMarcus Cousins, with one free throw that they desperately needed for the difference in the ball game. Let's check in with Janine. Well, as the Wildcats secure their 26th SEC championship, congratulations to John Calipari. I want you to take me back to that final second in regulation and the free throw by Bledsoe. And when John Wall got the ball, what were you seeing? What was that like for you in that last uh, we second? We got down to five because we left the corner man. And, and you know, it's upsetting, but you got to move on. We're down five. And everybody said, Patrick, we got your back. We're going to win this. That's what a good team does. They refuse to lose. They have a will to win. But Mississippi State should be in now. If anybody watched this game, if we're the number two team, what are they? They're really good. How important was the transition game for you guys? It's what makes us go. I mean, um, we got to get it in transition. We got to get some free baskets. But I will tell you this. We really guarded pretty good, made them take tough shots. And as the game wore on, I think their legs gave a little bit because they missed some shots they normally would make. We were fortunate. Come on, we, we shouldn't have won the game. And Rick did a great job of coaching, and we just hung on. Well, we talked about the physicality and the emotional aspect of yesterday's game. Any signs that your guys were wearing down towards the end? I don't think so. I mean, I think they at the end, they, they wanted to go get this done. And like you said, it's all about the will and how bad do you want it, right? Congratulations, Coach. Remember, at the end of regulation, Point one second. And then that free throw, and they needed all of them because Beanock actually knocks this down at the buzzer at the end of overtime. There's what sent it to overtime at 64, DeMarcus Cousins. And then his free throw is what finally iced it. You talk about needing every point. And there's two happy freshmen including our player of the game, John Wall, with a huge three-pointer with a man right in his face and right on his arm, and then the celebration shortly afterward. There's our player of the game. Might have seen his last SEC tournament game as well. I think you all know that. The all-tournament team, John Wall and Eric Bledsoe and DeMarcus Cousins, all from Kentucky. Jarvis Bernardo, tremendous in defeat today, as was Barry Stewart, who fouled out, and they could have used him in overtime. The MVP was John Wall. Kentucky 75, Mississippi State 74. I want to thank all the folks in Nashville. 
Commissioner Slive of the SEC. We've had a good time at Bridgestone Arena. That's going to do it. Don't forget Celtics and Cleveland Cavaliers are coming up next. Don't forget an all-new Lost on Tuesday at 9, 8 Central. For Jimmy Dykes and Janine Edwards, Brad Nessler, the SEC champions are the Wildcats of Kentucky.